Hey guys, it's Britt. Tonight I am here to go over Katie Joy's video titled Am I OK? I had a few thoughts, so if you're interested, please keep watching. All right, you guys, so tonight we are here to go over some of the bigger points made in Katie's video. This video has been deleted. Surprise, surprise. She loves to post and delete, tweet and delete. We already know her way of running on social media, so I'm not surprised that this was posted and deleted, but I'm still going to react to it because at one point in time, just a couple days ago, she felt very strongly about the uh, statements that she made in this video. So we're going to go through them and I will sprinkle in my commentary as I do. And we're going to see what she has to say. So the title of the video was Am I OK? So let's hear, is she OK? I want to let you know I am not going to put a uh, visual in this video because it was just Katie sitting on a bed talking. It was not anything exciting to look at at all. So I, we're just going to listen to it and then I will talk uh, throughout the video. Before we get into this video, if you are a fan of Katie Joy, if you are a stan of Katie Joy and you already feel annoyed that I'm making this video, please see your way out. The door is right over there. I'm going to keep making these videos because people like them. So if you feel yourself getting upset, please see your way out and I will see you maybe later once you've seen the light. She wasn't offline for four whole days, let's be real. Katie cannot keep her paws off of her phone for more than a few hours. She deactivates Twitter, reactivates it, uh, says she's not going to be on YouTube, then you catch her in someone's live stream or you see a comment from her. And not to mention, this is only the activity that we know of. How many sock accounts do you think that Katie has? In my personal opinion, I think that it's endless. And if it's not her, then it could be her husband under his profile or his many sock accounts that I think that both of them probably own and operate. So she will never be offline for four days unless it's literally something that's taken out of her control. I've never had this many eyes on me before. I've only been on YouTube for a year and a half and asked, I know some channels grow faster, but in terms of like hitting the over 100,000 mark and going at a rocket pace, I have made a lot of mistakes because I one, did not know this platform very well and I didn't understand like the community rules per se or the nuances of what, you know, some creators appreciate, like, like and don't like and... Oh. First, she brags about how quickly she grew. Secondly, she says she doesn't know what creators like and don't like. There's some pretty simple rules to be a YouTube creator that I talk about all the time. Don't be an asshole. Don't throw your wealth in your subscribers' faces. Appreciate your subscribers. Um, don't be obsessive over any one person, i.e. like she was with Tati, and respect your fellow creators. If y'all are talking about the same things, here's a great example. Dad Challenge Podcast and I talk about the same people sometimes, and if he does a video first, I will mention that in my video. I will say, hey, I know that, you know, some of y'all probably follow Josh and saw him talk about this. Well, I saw it and I wanted to make my own reaction. I acknowledge that. I give my fellow creators common respect as long as they respect me. I, in my short time as a creator on YouTube, have seen so many shitty creators just backstab each other and be fake and phony on this platform. It's really mind-blowing what I've seen in my short time. But I am going to continue uh, focusing on my path, which is don't be an asshole, don't lie, don't, you know, give the middle finger to your subscribers. It's pretty simple, these things to do to not be a jerk on YouTube. 
dealing with a lot of criticism, but it's been very amplified lately. And I understand why, because there's this big lawsuit out there right now that has a lot of really big claims that I can't respond to. And it has created this monster where um, people are trying to sort of, I think, dissect everything I do to justify what they're seeing in the complaint. People are not dissecting anything. They're looking at the facts and forming their own opinions. There's this thing called the, uh, what is it, the court of public opinion? And that's exactly what Katie is going through right now. Once you start making videos on YouTube, you're going to have people that have opinions. Do I think that all of the opinions are fair and concise? Not necessarily, because I think that some people focus on the things that should probably be ignored. I think that with her, there is enough content and enough, enough of a clusterfuck where we can all talk about the things that actually matter. The attention has been on Katie Joy long before this lawsuit came along. Do I think that there are some larger YouTubers who now know who Katie Joy is? Absolutely. Because you have YouTubers like Keemstar, Creepshow Art, talking about her, and also you have, um, you know, Repzilla. Based on the videos that I have seen, nobody is nobody's looking at anything that hasn't actually happened. It's not like there's a bunch of old wives tales being circulated and that's what people are making videos about. These are things that Katie has either said on Twitter, on YouTube, on Instagram, um, you know, messages that she has sent to people. These are all facts. So nobody's dissecting something to make this out to be something that it's not a complaint and unfortunately in a lawsuit you can't speak you can't talk about it you can't answer questions about it you can't so you can't speak about it you can't ask or ask uh, answer questions about it but you have talked about it and you haven't kept your mouth shut the entire time you continue talking about it and you continue to show everybody that you are the nightmare client for any attorney. I would hate to have to represent someone like Katie Joy because instead of getting the four warnings and listening to one of the four, for Christ's sake, there were four warnings sent to you, you ignored all four and now we're going through the lawsuit and you still cannot just zip it and shut up. You have to continue talking. You have to continue, um, you know, you're, you're doxing people and you're consistently, um, you know, talking about the lawsuit and you're not being quiet. And that's the problem. So don't sit here and say, well, I can't say anything when the facts would show the exact opposite. You can't share details about it. You can't tell anyone what's happening because you don't want the other side to know what you're working on and you can't, until things are filed, disclose anything. And that's been really hard because I've known this whole time, like the truth and what we're working on and that I don't have anything to worry about. She always says this, I know the truth, we're building a case, I know all the facts, I have all the evidence. She, the, the lack of self-awareness that Katie has is like something that I have never seen before, ever. Not in my real life, not on YouTube. She is like below a zero when it comes to any level of self-awareness about and I know I've been confident in my truth knowing that what's being said about me is not truthful but obviously I can't provide any but it is true because you can see all of the videos that you made about Tati and the uh, extreme lengths that you went to to dig up information on not only her family but her husband and use that as information against them to use that as exclusive tea and, uh, you know, make endless content about it. The other thing that I'll say is 
The actions that we've seen from Katie since this lawsuit has come out, to me, it doesn't scream someone who is confident that they know all of the facts. It is someone who is shaking in their boots and trying to act like a hard ass and say that everyone's lying. I do not believe that Tati would ever waste her time on someone like Katie Joy if she did not have the grounds to stand on. She would have no interest in wasting the time, the money, the effort, the resources if she did not know that this would turn out in her favor. We're facing and what I didn't do. If you're new to my channel and like this is the first time you've ever met me, I am so sorry. Like I have been... If this is the first time to your channel and you're just meeting her, run for the hills. Pushed into a corner. I have been not responding the best to situations. But you never respond very well to situations. And we can show that with the history of what her patterns have been on YouTube. This woman has an entire Reddit subreddit thread dedicated to people calling her out on her bullshit. And this is someone who has 137,000 subscribers. For someone who has a million or two million or five million subscribers, sure, they have subreddits all over the place. But for someone of her size to have a dedicated Reddit thread to people showing this is what she's lying about and this is, you know, why it's a lie and this is the evidence, that says something very, very huge to me. Me personally, that tells me that this person has had such a pattern of behavior that it's so predictable that they had to open a Reddit thread just to build all of her bullshit into one website. Here's the thing also, when she says how she doesn't respond well and she's been pushed into a corner and all of this stuff, at the end of the day, what her attorney wanted her to do would have been to sit down and shut up. But she is unable to do that because like I said earlier in the video, she cannot just sit back and allow things to play out and allow her attorney to do his job. I cannot imagine how frustrating it would be for her attorney right now to see a client acting like this. It would just be like, I would just want to hit my head against the wall. They know how I conduct my research. They know how I do my conduct my research. Girl, you read off of Facebook posts and Twitter threads. That is not research. Going back to my other video, Katie Joy is not a journalist. Come on. My videos, they know I make mistakes. Um, they also know that I will be the first one to admit if I F up. Like, I am sure the first person to apologize if I upset someone. Is she serious? She's the first person to apologize when she upsets someone. Navigate all these voices that I was not used to hearing. I came from the writing world, and so, like, in the writing world... They in the writing world, she really talks about herself like she was some sort of, you know, publisher with, like, the Washington Post or something. She used to write articles on Pathios. She, she is not some world-renowned journalist who used to take pride in her work and now she's on YouTube. And I should have just maybe taken that with me and taken that to YouTube. But so the whole thing with ignoring comments is that I don't think Katie is capable of ignoring comments. I don't think that she is capable of ignoring the naysayers or um, you know, focusing on the good and tuning out the bad, I think that she's the type of person who thrives off of that, and she will go down kicking and screaming just to prove someone to be a troll. 
it, it's the most odd, it, it's just the most odd, crazy way of um, handling a YouTube platform that I've seen in many different ways, all from this one person. You know, parenting a child that has disabilities, I have tried to bring myself to the platform while I tell stories and also be mindful of how when I'm talking about stories that I am cognizant of who I'm speaking about and know that the people that I'm speaking about could watch this stuff, you know? So what do you say to Sophie? What do you say to Sophie if you're so aware that people could be watching this? What do you say to all the Duggars with the allegations that you've said against them? What do you say about all of the people that you have made accusations against during your time on YouTube? She's full of it. The things that she has said about some of these public figures is atrocious. And again, it all comes back to her trying to pass her personal opinions off as facts. And we've had many conversations about this on my channel. If you're gonna be sharing your opinion on your channel, totally fine. We all have opinions, we can all share them. But you have to make it very clear that these are my opinions. Opinions are not facts, and that's why that disclaimer is in the beginning of so many different commentary videos. You'll also see it in the description box because most people who are running commentary channels realize that I'm just sharing my opinion. But she wants to be taken more seriously. She loves to remind everyone how she's a journalist. But at the end of the day, all she is is a trashy tea channel at best. Especially like when I was still writing, there's this clip going around of me talking about my research that I was writing. And it's being used to paint me as a stalker. Um, but I was actually doing research for an investigative piece that I was writing at the time for an outlet that I was working for. So when I was on my live stream, which literally probably had like 10 people in the chat, I was just talking about how I had gotten a lot of leads and I was following all these different directions. And a lot of the leads ended up being just like, if anyone is a writer, they know that you sometimes end up on a dead, a dead end or a dead lead. So if the leads were dead, then... What you're saying is instead of just moving on with your life, you decided to continue to dig and dig and dig and dig and dig on people who had nothing to do with the original person that you were even looking into. And once you got what you wanted, then you came to your YouTube channel with it. That is not what journalists do, Katie. That is not what people with integrity do. But what would I expect? Not d digging into anything or, you know, going to people's houses or talking to people's friends. It was nothing at all. So, you know, and it was all settled, to be honest. So when this all came out, it was kind of shocking because one, that article has not been online for a long time. And it's been a long time since it was published. And I made corrections right away. And all of this will be shown when we actually present. I like how she says that she wasn't digging when all of the information online can prove her wrong. I shared that and now it's kind of being used against me in a way without context. And I'm starting to realize that a lot of things are being shared that I've said without context. And I'm not used to that. I'm not used to having someone take a 10 second clip and then present that as if I said something when it's really not what I said or how I said it or the... So she doesn't like when people take small snip snippets of stuff that she actually said and present it as information. But she can take little snippets and little pieces of information from Twitter and Facebook and uh, her, her mysterious sources that she has all over the world, and she can present that as information and not contact the person to get their side of the story. So you can, uh, you know, let's use Micah Stauffer as an example. You can talk to her old coworker and you can go on these Facebook groups and all of this kind of stuff to get information and uh, present that as facts. 
To my knowledge, Katie never went to Micah to say, can I get your side of the story? To my knowledge, if she did contact her and was denied, that's fine. But she does this with everybody. It's not just with Micah. She takes little pieces of information and will throw it on her channel like it is the final say-so in any argument. But all of a sudden, people are supposed to come to her to get her side of the story. And nobody is supposed to use snippets of stuff that she actually said and present it on any platform. The hypocrisy, you guys. The whole scheme of what I said. I did feedback from my community help me realize the mistakes I was making? Yes. I'm She's going to try to say that she took feedback from her community now. The level of bullshit that is in this video is so high I can barely see. You know, no wonder she got rid of this video because it makes her look like you know, if she didn't look bad enough already, this is just, you know, keep digging the hole that you're in, might as well. A million percent. And I think a lot of my subscribers would tell you that I have changed and grown. She hasn't changed. She has not changed for a fucking second. And I realized with this platform comes a great responsibility in how I report things. Great responsibility on how you report things. So are you saying that presenting your opinions as facts is a bad idea or a good idea or what? Like, what does that mean? And, you know, what does that say also for the responsibility that your subscribers have given you and the respect that your subscribers have given you and you have given them nothing in return because as soon as they have a criticism or a question that you don't want to answer they are blocked so i've always tried to stick to being objective being she's objective sure jan of the reporting it's like automatically i'm all bad and so i have ptsd and so coming from this place of so now she's gonna say that she has ptsd and that's uh why she handles things the way that she does and you know in in a time when the shit's hitting the fan and you're in the corner let's just say well guys i have ptsd and that's why i handle things this way this is not okay um when you feel like the world is against you and you have ptsd um you get into this like fight or flight mode where you feel like everyone is gonna hurt you and so you either like fight flight or freeze and i found myself at times freezing at times running away and sometimes just like fighting because i literally felt like no one believed me. No one cared what my side of the story was. Nobody wanted to hear my side. And that still kind of is the part that gets to me is that there's all these videos being made about me and yet nobody has actually come to me for my side. No one. Okay, so everyone's supposed to come to you to get your side of the story, but when do you ever go to someone else and ask for their side of the story? It goes back to exactly what I was just saying. She takes little pieces of information, uses her inside sources that are never named, and presents all of this garbage as fact. And that's what got her in this position with Tati, and that's why this lawsuit is happening, because she has presented her opinions as facts over and over and over again. And, you know, that's not even covering the stalker-ish side, in my personal opinion, to what she did with Tati. Um, so she expects the respect from creators to get her side of the story, but she's allowed to make videos and talk about whoever she wants and pass everything off as facts because she's an investigative journalist. This makes so little sense that I can't even try to think of her reasoning. I can't even try to 
look at this and say, okay, well, if I was in this position, this is how I would feel because this is all fucking nonsense to me. Instead of, you know, ask me questions to clarify before uploading videos about me. And not to mention, you know, at least for me, I can say the videos that I make about Katie are reviewing things that she has either said in video, tweeted about, said on Instagram, like especially with the reaction videos that I've done, those are things that she actually did. So am I going to go to her and say, give me your side of the story, why did you tear apart Jill Rodriguez? Well, no, because she thinks that it's funny. If you thought it was funny enough to film and put on, on your YouTube channel, I don't owe you the, uh, you know, respect to come get your side of the story. Clearly, you thought it was funny, and you did address it in a recent live stream, saying that it was snarky, even though that was literally bullying, in my personal opinion. Literally accusing me of crimes, which is really serious. Like, if you're, my, in my opinion, if you're going to go on your channel and accuse someone of a crime, you should for sure have evidence that a... If you're going to go on your channel and accuse someone, someone of a crime, you need to have evidence. What the hell does that say for all the videos that she has made accusing people of crimes with zero evidence? This might be the most hypocritical video that's on YouTube right now, ever, ever made, since the platform was created. For sure have evidence that a crime has been committed, or you should for sure like have more than a 10 second clip and an assumption. She doesn't need to have proof, but any YouTuber who wants to talk about her needs to have proof, get her permission, get her side of the story, and, you know, basically clear it with her before they post it. Get the fuck out of here. And then you have all these other creators that are just sort of like dogpiling on it, not reaching out to me, not asking me for any sort of clarification. This is commentary. Nobody needs your permission to put their opinions on the internet as long as they're presented as just that, opinions. Refusing to work with me privately if I ask them to correct things. There's been so many videos that have gone out that have literally had the plot. So she's upset about creators making videos about her, but um, she has had really nasty uh, things to say about other creators on this platform for a very long time now, but it goes back to if you want to make a video about Katie, then you need to try to talk to her offline first. No, that's not the way it works. That is not the fucking way it works. We are allowed to put our opinions out there as long as they're presented as opinions and not facts, and we're allowed to talk about whoever the fuck we want to talk about. Get over it. When this person the only reason I cared to even look into this person was because she falsely published something about me and refused to correct it, and then some... Falsely published something about you and refused to correct it. See, this is what I'm talking about with the hypocrisy. What about all of the things that she has report, uh, reported falsely and not corrected about the many, many, many people that she has talked about on her channel? But supposedly someone does it to her and she sends an email copying her YouTube manager saying, remove your video. That's not the way the fucking world works, Katie. Somebody told me, well, I'll do a video that shows that she has lied about other people, okay? So that's how I got there. I literally Googled her name. It came up. It was under the recommended searches under Google. So I literally Googled her to see who she was. That's how I got there. And then I shared a link, not seeing that her full name was in there, to the creator who said he was making a video about her because he promised me he was making a video about her. And I wasn't, it wasn't like a takedown video of her. It was more like a response. Like, I didn't want to do a response. I didn't want to get into a fight. All I wanted her to do was to correct the video it's very funny because she um, basically outs herself that she was telling Uni Rock to do her dirty work. I don't really want to talk about Uni in this video because I have I have my own personal opinions about him because, as some of you might know, he did make a video 
about me and it was very, very gross. So I don't want to talk about him in this video. Honestly, I don't trust him. I think he and Katie are one and the same and I don't believe anything that he says. So let's keep going. She wouldn't, which is weird. If you know factually that you got something wrong and someone's telling you to correct it editorially, you should honest, like typically want to correct any mistruth that you're putting out on your platform. You should want to correct any mistruths that you're putting out on your platform. What does that say for every single time you got something wrong in a video and you didn't take down the video? What does that say? Because there have been many, many, many times where people have corrected you and they are blocked or they're called trolls and then they're blocked. If you don't want to be appearing biased. So when she wouldn't do that, I had to speak to my YouTube manager who then said reach out to her and ask her and let her know that, you know, let her know that YouTube is like, you talk to YouTube about this, that kind of thing, accusing me of perjury which is a big deal. And people are allowed to publish an email that was sent to them. That's just the way it is. The email that you sent is not your email. This is not something that was leaked. This was something that was sent to someone else. So, I mean, isn't the email half theirs, half yours? You don't have 100% ownership of over an email once it's actually sent out of your account. To her channel to humiliate me again and calling me, it gets worse. And, you know, basically at that point, I would say it's harassment. If I'm not, I mean, I'm telling you, you got it wrong. I'm asking you to correct it or to remove the video and you won't. And then your response is to further expose me, to humiliate me, to make more money off my name. She wants to tell someone you're trying to make money off of my name. What the hell does that say for everything that she has ever made? About the Duggars, about the sister wives, about teen mom stuff, um, you know, the whole thing with Tati. Her whole channel was designed to make money off of other people's names and she had zero integrity and zero respect for the things that she talked about on her channel or the information that she was presenting, uh, presenting her opinions as facts. The, I've, I've never seen, I've literally, like this is the thing that is so crazy to me, it's just that I have never seen someone act so stupid. Like, this is actually really dumb because the things that she's saying in this video Every single thing that she says can be flipped around to show that she has done this to at least one other person during her time on YouTube. No YouTuber has this many issues in this short amount of time with the number of subscribers that she has on her channel. Who creates their own mess by uploading a video, creates their own chaos through business transactions, through treating creators poorly, getting involved with people who has their own problematic history, who has a zillion reasons for why they're not on YouTube, who has admitted their, who has blamed all these other people for her problems, and suddenly I'm the person that caused all of these issues, do moving forward. And first off, this is not an apology video. So I don't know if you're coming here expecting apologies, but this is definitely not an apology video. It's not an apology video. She's never said sorry. And if she has, it hasn't been genuine. And if she does apologize for something, she turns around and does the same fucking shit the same week. And business information is private. Like, even though I have a public platform. So the last thing that she says is she rants for a couple seconds about cancel culture. I've said before, I, I believe in cancel culture, but I don't believe that it works because if it did, then there would be several people who would no longer be on this platform or have thriving careers. But cancel culture is not cancel culture. It's actually holding people accountable culture. And I've talked about that a lot before, so I won't bore you guys in this video. Here, here's my whole thing. Here, here's how I feel about this video. 
First of all, I think the Am I OK title was obviously looking for attention and sympathy because this video was posted shortly after Katie made threats to cut it off early, if you guys know what I mean. Um, so there was a lot of concern about that. Then this video comes out um, before she cut off the like and dislike rate, um, you know, where you could see the likes and dislikes. The dislikes were absolutely out of control. They heavily outweighed the likes. People are tired. So people are emotionally tired and they are physically tired from listening to this bullshit all the time from her. They are sick and tired of the excuses, the hypocrisy, the entitlement. And I think that this would have been the par perfect opportunity for Katie to sit down and shut up and actually take some time off of the internet actually spend some time with your kid and your husband. Use this as a reason to not post on YouTube or social media. Cut your phone off and people who need to contact you could use an alternate phone number. This could have been a this could have been an opportunity for growth, but as we know, someone who's that much in denial and has zero self-awareness doesn't look at things as opportunities for growth. They just keep going. And I do not believe that anything is going to stop her unless it's a hard stop. So if it's, you know, with the lawsuit, if it's a judge shutting down her YouTube channel, you know, that could be a hard stop. I don't see her taking this under control by herself. Put it that way. So anyway, I wanted to go over parts of this video with you guys. A lot of it was just pointless nonsense in my opinion. She's obviously trying to save her ass and people who are on the fence are, I think that they are making their decisions based on videos like this. So people will either stay and feel bad for her, or they will realize that this is just a cycle with her. Everything repeats itself. It's the same actions over and over again. It's being hypocritical and, um, you know, on top of it, who wants to support a YouTuber like this who has been shown to disrespect her fans uh, or her subscribers and just repeat the same bullshit over and over again. I would be tired beyond what I can even explain if I was one of her subscribers at this point. I would find a better way to spend my watch time and my watch minutes and my likes and my support. So anyway, um, I hope that you guys liked this video. If you did, please leave a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.